Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll use Auto Layout to build a responsive card element for our portfolio's landing page. Then we'll revisit the elements we built in the previous lessons and apply Auto Layout to them to build a container system for our portfolio. Finally, we'll wrap things up by turning all of the elements into reusable components. We'll start by building the card element. Cards are used to present bite-sized chunks of content in a way that encourages viewers to interact with it to see more details. The name cards come from their resemblance to physical cards, like playing cards. Even if the term is new to you, you probably interact with card elements every day, whether you're browsing a streaming service, shopping online, or scrolling through your social media feed. Thanks to their modular and flexible nature, cards have quickly become a popular pattern in modern product design. Our card will be used to showcase past work and give readers an entry point to another page where they can learn more about the project. The card will include an image to give a visual preview of our work, a heading for the project name, a short description of the project, and a call to action button. we'll be using the same button component we built in the previous lesson. If you missed that video, be sure to watch it before moving forward. Let's start by creating the card's title and description. Use the text tool to add a text layer to the canvas and type project title. Since this will be the card's header, we want it to stand out a bit more than the description. Leave the font family set to enter, but change the font size to 25 and the line height to 38. Make sure the font weight is set to semi-bold and the alignment is set to align left. Select the text layer and duplicate it. This will be our card's description. Move the layer below the project title layer and enter some placeholder text for now. Change the font weight to medium and font size to 20. Leave the line height set at 38. Now let's add our button. Instead of using the main component, we'll add an instance of that component to the canvas. Select the button component and either duplicate it or hold down the modifier key and drag to create an instance. Place the instance below the description text layer and make sure the layers are left aligned. The spacing between layers doesn't need to be perfect. We'll fix it using auto layout at a later time. Let's add a rectangle to the left of the text and button layers. Set the height to 350 and don't worry about the width for now. This will be an image placeholder, so let's update the fill to reflect that. In the Fill section, open the color picker and select Image at the top. Let's call this layer Thumbnail. Now that we have all the pieces of our card element, it's time to put them together using Auto Layout. To start, select the text and button layers, then press Shift-A to add them to an Auto Layout frame. Go ahead and rename this new frame to Description. Leave the rest of the Auto Layout properties as is, but set the vertical gap to 16. Great! Now we need to add all of our layers to a parent frame. Select both the Description frame and the Thumbnail layer, and press Shift-A to create a new Auto Layout frame. Rename this frame to Content. You might be wondering why we added the text and button layers to their own frame instead of including everything in a single parent frame. Auto layout frames can only flow in one direction, but our card content has elements that need to flow both horizontally and vertically. 
Nesting auto layout frames within other auto layout frames lets us create multi-dimensional layouts with elements that flow in different directions. This nested structure also allows us to set different padding values between objects. We already set the vertical padding between our text and button layers, so let's set the horizontal padding between the thumbnail and description frame. Select the content frame and change the horizontal gap to 32. When adding auto layout to existing layers, the auto layout properties are determined by how the child layers are arranged on the canvas. When we applied auto layout to the text and button layers, Figma automatically set the frame's direction to vertical because the layers were arranged in a vertical stack. Because the thumbnail and description layers are positioned side by side, Figma automatically set the content frame's direction to horizontal. A child layer's position on the canvas also determines what the parent frame's alignment is set to when auto layout is applied. If your description frame was aligned with the horizontal center of the thumbnail layer, your alignment may be set to align left. Let's make sure the content frame's alignment is set to align top left instead. We also need to give the content frame a maximum width so that our card element takes up the same amount of horizontal space as the other elements in our portfolio design. In the Auto Layout section, open the Width Resizing drop-down menu and select Add Max Width. Enter 1000 in the Max Width field. This means that the frame can only ever reach a maximum of 1000 pixels wide, regardless of the content inside. Depending on the length of your text layers, your description frame may be spreading beyond the content frame's bounding box. Let's rein that in. Select the description frame and change the width resizing to fill container. Keep the height resizing as is. To keep things visually balanced, let's do the same for the thumbnail layer. This will allow our description to grow and shrink while making sure the width of the text content matches the width of the image. While we're here, we'll also lock the thumbnail's aspect ratio so that its dimensions can scale proportionally, preventing the image from being squished. If your text layers are still going beyond the content frame's boundaries, you may need to adjust the two text layers with resizing directly. Select the two text layers and check to make sure their width resizing properties are set to fill container. Since we want to add several cards to our portfolio landing page, we'll turn our card into a component. But before we do that, let's compare what we've created to the finished portfolio design. The content frame in our final design is nested inside another frame with auto layout applied. And if we keep looking, we can see that the same can be said for most of the other portfolio elements. Let's explore why we've structured them this way. By adding an additional frame around an element, we can create a container system for our portfolio. A container system turns each element into discrete blocks, making it easy for us to add, reorder, and swap blocks as we build our designs. We can still change aspects of individual blocks, like updating the content, adding a background fill, we're adjusting the top and bottom padding without worrying how these changes will impact the rest of the content on the page. Let's walk through an example to better understand the benefits of using a container system. Imagine a layout with several card elements and we wanna add a background fill behind one card to help emphasize content we want to draw the visitor's eye to. If we were to apply the fill directly to the content frame, the fill will only extend to the frame's boundary. By adding the element to a container frame, we can ensure the background fill spans the entire page width without impacting the element's responsiveness or alignment on the page. Now that we know more about container systems, we'll revisit the elements we built earlier and apply auto layout to them. We'll also turn each element into a component 
so they'll be ready for when we build our final portfolio design. We'll start by completing the card element we were just working on. Select the frame tool and click and drag to create a new frame around the content frame. Check the layer section to make sure the content frame is inside the new frame. Rename the frame to project card, then press shift A to apply auto layout. Use the auto layout section to set the alignment to center, the horizontal padding to 24, and the vertical padding to 56. The height resizing is already set to hug contents, which is what we want. We'll change the width resizing to fill container when we add an instance of this component to our final designs. For now, we'll leave it as fixed. All right, it's time to add the rest of our portfolio elements to containers. Revisiting past work might feel a little repetitive, but design is all about iteration. The time and effort invested now will pay off when we put our final designs together. As we update each element in this section, you'll notice the auto layout configurations follow a similar pattern. Most elements will have a max of 1000, with their horizontal padding set to 24 and their vertical padding set to 56. However, a few key elements will have some slight adjustments to help them stand out on the page. With that in mind, we'll start by selecting the landing page hero frame and pressing Shift A to apply auto layout. Set the max width to 1000. Make sure the vertical gap is set to 24 and set both padding options to zero. Next, we'll add the container frame. Use the frame tool to add a new frame around the landing page hero frame. Rename this new frame to personal bio and apply auto layout to it. Change the alignment to center, the horizontal padding to 24, and the vertical padding to 104. The extra vertical padding emphasizes the bio's importance, helping it stand out from the other elements. Select the landing page hero frame once more and change the width resizing to fill container. We'll tackle the section heading next. Select the section heading text layer and press Shift A. Rename the new frame to Section Heading. Select the text layer inside the frame. Give it a max width of 1000. Make sure both resizing properties are set to Fill Container. Then reselect the Section Heading frame. To create a strong visual relationship between the section heading and the content that follows it, we'll use different padding values on the top and bottom of the frame. Select individual padding in the auto layout section and change the left and right padding to 24, the top padding to 72, and the bottom padding to zero. We're making progress. Next, select the paragraph text layer and press Shift A. Rename the new frame to text block. Select the nested text layer and give it a max width of 1000. Set its width resizing to fill container, then select the text block frame and set its horizontal padding to 24 and vertical padding to 56. Moving on, select the quote text layer and press Shift A. Rename this frame to quote block. If you recall, we gave this text layer a specific width of 570. That's because we want the quote block to act as a visual break on the page. With that in mind, select the quote text layer and give it a max width of 570 and set the width resizing to fill container. Then select the quote block frame and change the horizontal padding to 24 and the vertical padding to 56. 
We're now down to our last two elements. Next, select the image layer and press Shift A. Rename the new frame to Image Block. Change the horizontal padding to 24 and vertical padding to 56. Then select the nested image layer, set the max width to 1000, and width resizing to fill container. Finally, select the impactful text frame and press, you guessed it, Shift A. This element is already designed to span the full width of the website, so we don't need to add it to the container frame. In the auto layout section, change the horizontal padding to 24 and vertical padding to 128. Just like in the personal bio element, this extra chunky vertical padding will help offset this prominent element from other content on the page. Our portfolio elements not only look great, but are now responsive. Now comes the fun part, turning them into components. Instead of creating individual components, we can create components in bulk. You can create up to 100 components at once, which comes in handy right about now. Before moving forward, make sure you have these portfolio elements. A personal bio, a section heading, a text block, a quote block, an image block, an impactful text hero, and a project card element. Select all of these elements, then click the arrow next to create component in the right sidebar and choose create multiple components. Awesome. To keep our file organized, we'll move our main components over to the components page. To select all of the components, including the button component we created earlier, right click on the selection, hover over move to page, and select components. Now that we've moved our elements, the case study desktop frame preset we added earlier should be empty. We won't be using it again, so you can either delete it or save it to use for your own future explorations. Excellent work. Not only did we use auto layout to design a card element, we also revisited the other portfolio elements and added them to a container system. We finished the lesson by turning our portfolio elements into reusable components and moving them to our dedicated components page. Coming up next, we'll apply what we learned about auto layout and components to build navigation bar and footer elements for our website. See you there. Thank <laughs> you.